So Carolina Panthers traded away Christian McCaffrey and with an interim coach, no more McCaffrey, no more Robbie Anderson, turning down two first round picks for Brian Burns. Any player on the team could be traded by the time this video comes out. Carolina Panthers with PJ Walker, XFL legend PJ Walker, put up a 21 to 3 victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are currently three and four and also first place in the NFC South, because even though Tampa has had a catastrophic start to their season, the NFC South has provided no alternatives in terms of teams that will prevent them from winning the NFC South. So Juju, I turn it over to you. What do you make of everything that's going on uh, in Tampa Bay thus far? I make that I'm very confused by it, but I'm wondering what I should be confused about. Because I look at the Tampa Bay Bucks and I ask myself, what is the biggest issues with this team? And I'm guessing the offensive line has to be the biggest pressing need for them in terms of fixing this roster or trying to fix it. But the problem is you, you usually don't find starting caliber offensive linemen on the NFL trade market. So I don't see that getting any better for them. I don't know if Tom has enough juice to be able to get Gronk to unretire. So that's a big problem for the team not having his presence is it Tom being broken? Is is Tom washed? That I guess that's the biggest question that people are going to be asking. After seeing that throw to Mike Evans, it's hard for me to say that Tom ability-wise has fallen off. He clearly still has the arm talent to be able to make the necessary throws, and I think that he's been able to do that. He threw 49 times in that game against the Panthers. You're changing over the coaching staff, um, at least Bruce Arians at the top. And while I know that Leftwich took more control of play calling, Bruce Arians, him not being in that sideline, I'm sure has a little bit of an impact. I, I think that we kind of underrated that stuff early on. And now we're starting to see that really come to fruition because we shouldn't be surprised by the fact that they struggled offensively against the Panthers because they've been struggling for weeks anyway. I think that a loss against the Panthers like they did, this three-point performance that they had, just kind of recontextualizes just how bad the Bucks' offensive struggles have been. Yeah, an offensive line is going to be the biggest concern there. Uh, I, I agree with you. Not to say that the receiving core isn't absolutely decimated for Tampa because Gronk retired. Cameron Brait went down with the injury last week that looked pretty gruesome. I, I actually didn't follow up on what his injury status was. I just kind of felt like he wasn't going to be back for a while. The, the second leading receiver for the Buccaneers was a guy named Cade Otten this week, which again, like it's just a made up person. That's just like Cyril Grayson. Cade Otten is just a made up person in that roster. And obviously they had Godwin, they had Evans back. Leonard Fournette went out. It's just, it's been a cavalcade of injuries, but I think also the thing that we should bring up, and this is why I think like their struggles aren't as surprising to me, which is, Tom Brady doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be there. He retired to go to Miami. He got Bruce Arians fired. Tom Brady does not want to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's going to leave after 2023, possibly continue his career, possibly not. He simply does not want to be there. Oh, and okay. So are you accusing Tom Brady of sabotaging their season? I'm not saying he's sabotaging their season. But I'm saying it's are. hard to be... No, I'm the conclusion I'm drawing is it's hard to be invested when you don't want to actually be there. Like when you are not happy in the position that you are, it's hard to invest in a team that already has these other problems that we talked about. It's not that he's actively doing malicious stuff to make their season worse. It's just the same thing. If you've, re I mean, I've read the book by Seth Wickersham about the Patriots that last year in New England, he was basically saying, What the F am I doing? Every time he was trying to fight back from injury and he had a worse QBR than Mitchell Trubisky and he felt like the offense wasn't working in his favor. And I'm seeing all the same patterns happen now, except we have the context because he left New England and again, actively retired. And his condition of coming back was that the coach got fired. And I think he just would have been better off if playing at all this year, he would have been better off just going to another team. It's just, it's hard to get yourself up and invest when you know that you don't actually want to be with the team that you're playing for and you're already thinking about where your next move is going to be. So what should Tom Brady do or what should he have done? Well, what should he have done was not sign that two-year extension after winning the Super Bowl. 
because it would have given him the flexibility to walk away after the fallout with Bruce Arians and the power struggle between them that ultimately led to Bruce Arians getting fired as a condition of Tom Brady's reinstatement. It seems like he would have been happier had he retired. I don't know exactly what this season is doing to him mentally because I'm not Tom Brady. I don't understand the whole psychology of going through a divorce, retiring and unretiring, not wanting to play for the team that, you know, at 45 years old, it's it's already fallen apart physically. And just the idea of being a 45 year old quarterback, it's hard for me to put myself in the perspective of Tom Brady. I just have the evidence that says, hey, he doesn't want to play in Tampa. He retired to go play in Miami. And then when he came back, he's just like, ah, I guess I kind of have to go back to Tampa now contractually. Yeah, but there's a lot of people that wake up and go to jobs that they don't like, but still perform admirably. Are you accusing them of basically quiet quitting? Is that the phrase that's getting thrown around on LinkedIn these days? Um, It's not quiet quitting. It's that having an incredibly deep and strong offensive line and just being able to sign Gronk and Antonio Brown makes your life a whole lot easier at 43 and 44. And when you take away that safety blanket, it's not going to look as pretty. It's not like Tom Brady's been like catastrophically terrible this year. It's not like he's been Jacoby Brissett level numbers. He's just been a below average NFL quarterback, which by the way is what Tom Brady was that last year in new England when he had his falling out with the Patriots. It's just really difficult to play football when you don't want to be in the situation that you're in. It's a little different in this respect in 2019 with the Patriots, we can point to those skill position players on the outside for Brady and legitimately say that those guys were pretty awful, right? That was Nikhil Harry in his rookie year. That was, I think they had Jacoby Myers maybe there. Maybe they had a Braxton Berrios. Receivers like that, guys <laughs> who are Philip Dorsett. That, that was a lot of the Patriots receivers towards the tail end. I, I think that it's important to still say he does still have Godwin. He still does have Evans. And when Evans lets him down like he did today with that drop, that's, that's going to be an all-timer drop for Mike Evans because that that was wrap him in a blanket, put him away. He still has those players. It, it just flipped. Uh, and now you look at the offensive line versus the Patriots offensive line in 2019. We always accredited Tom Brady with his ability to do more with less. And now I still feel as though losing Gronk isn't nothing. Losing three starting centers before the season even starts isn't nothing. There are reasons to be concerned. I, I just don't think you could look at the Bucs, and I picked them very early on as my Super Bowl team. They'll probably still win the South. I, I think that that's obvious, right, that they should still win the South in theory because despite the Panthers beating them, we know the Panthers aren't a better team. The Panthers have no recourse to get better towards the tail end of the season because they literally are on their third quarterback. They traded away their biggest offensive weapon and their defense can't carry them unless they just have a Philadelphia Phillies type run in them in terms of firing a head coach and moving (laughs) to the interim guy. Uh, You look at the Atlanta Falcons. I like Arthur Smith and what they're doing there. I like their ability to run the ball, but Marcus Mariota, we agree, is a limited quarterback. Their defense has been hit or miss, although they had an opportunity to come back on the Buccaneers early in the season. And then in New Orleans, they have a whole mess going on of, What do we do with Andy Dalton, Jameis Winston? Either way, they don't have a quarterback that they really trust at all. They have improved playmakers for them on the outside. Their defense is still good, but has fallen off, has regressed. I think it's important to note that the New Orleans Saints defense isn't the Saints defense that you advertise coming into the year. They are not playing at that same level. In fact, they've been burned multiple times in the secondary. So there's no clear challenger in division. So now we start looking around the NFC uh, the NFC has been a mismatch of teams. You you look at the Eagles, who are probably the truest team in terms of success and being able to week in, week out, give you a consistent level of performance. Uh, the Buccaneers might match up well from them based off what they're able to do defensively. It's just can they figure out what they are able to do offensively? The Niners, I don't know what to make of the Niners after their performance against the Chiefs. Uh, the defense that was dominating people four weeks through – came back and just allowed 40 points pretty much unanswered by Patrick Mahomes. And then you look at the Packers. I mean, the Packers are on this three-game losing streak. I should mention the Minnesota Vikings first, but the Minnesota Vikings are coasting to the NFC North title. The Packers, who will be in that wild card hunt, (laughs) the Packers have just as many question marks as the Bucs. Yeah, so this is the interesting part about that. Because again, I'll I'll point out, the, the average QBR for an NFL 
starting quarterback is about 90. Tom Brady has a 93 this year. So he's playing above average. He's ranked 14th in QBR that the people he's equal to are Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, and Justin Herbert with torn rib cartilage. That's that's what Tom Brady's playing at. This so let's year. talk about the expectations here because, okay, if they're on a course to be the number four seed, be the division winner of the NFC South, at the five seed right now, that it's would be Dallas. the Giants, right? Oh, well, yeah. The Giants guess... are only at their six and one mark, and the Giants are going to be at the hunt. At this point, it's inevitable. The Giants will probably be in the postseason worst as a seven seed just because they let's let's assume it's Dallas. Let's assume Dallas will have a better record than the Giants at the end of the season. That feels like a safe bet, not a guaranteed bet, but a safe bet that the Cowboys will have a better record at the end of the year than the Giants. Okay, against Dallas, we saw how that matchup played out in week one. Buccaneers defense whomped. (laughs) <laughs> the Dak led Dallas Cowboys offense, albeit Dak, of course, suffered his injury in that game. So we know that they can at least win that matchup. We know that that's something. Let's assume in the case of the Giants, let's say the Giants were able to get there. Limited offense. So if you're the Buccaneers defense, that's an opportunity for you to take advantage of the limited Giants offense. Um, and defensively, they might cause issues based off these early season results we're seeing from the Buccaneers but you should be able to get the slight edge in that game based off that. So they might be able to at least win a playoff game. Okay. We get into the second round, right? If they are in fact the four seed and let's assume let's go chalk. Let's say all the division winners win in wildcard weekend, which won't happen, but we'll, let's say that happens. Then they would go into this matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. Can they win that fun. matchup? It'd be fun. I think Philadelphia matched up against an elite defense would be great. And Tampa is, an elite defense they have a really really good defense and they have an average offense who does that sound like san francisco and the thing i've been saying all year is how ironic is it that jimmy garoppolo is doing tom brady better than tom brady right now which is kind of funny that that's how that worked out because the 49ers are they both have average offenses the 49ers just have a better defense than what tampa bay has and both of them are really great defenses it's just We'll see. I mean, I haven't seen the Buccaneers defense allow 40 like the Niners did today. Tampa is a really, really good team defensively, and their offense is about average. And again, you could bet on the correction of what Tampa is, but this is closer to what Tampa is than that Super Bowl run in 2020. Like that season, Tampa was the third best team in the NFC. They they were not as good as the Packers and they were not as good as the Saints. And I know they beat both of them in the playoffs. They were just crazy aberrations that they ended up winning those games. That still drives me insane. Wait, they had results. an incredible... Doesn't matter. They, look, they had an incredible second half of the season, blah, blah, blah. Like Tampa, the first half of the year with Tom Brady and last year's team and this year's team is closer to what this Tampa team is, which is a very good, not elite team in the NFL. And they are a team that this year I point to them and say they're in that group of the second tier, which is the very good, the playoff teams. They do some things very well and there are clear shortcomings on the team. And I I think that Tampa is a team that for myself is a tier below San Francisco and Philadelphia and also is going to win a lot of games this season in the regular season, get either the third or fourth seed, depending on, you know, semantics and probably tiebreakers and stuff. Every little loss like this is going to make the schedule a little bit weirder for Tampa going forward. Do you see this offense breaking out at any point, or you think this is just kind of what the Tampa Bay offense is the rest of the season? I don't think Tampa is going to have a game where they go for 42 points like they did against the Falcons or they did against, uh, I think it was, who was it? I think it was Detroit a couple years ago. Uh, who is that team that they played like right after they came so out? So a couple of years, perform- a couple of years ago, performance to clarify, because against the Falcons, obviously they only scored 21, a uh, couple. Sundays. Oh yeah. The, 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 it was, a, I think it was Detroit a couple of years ago. They came out of their bye week and re- remember when they won the Super Bowl, they, they had their bye week and then they went eight. No, for the rest of the season. Right after the bye week, I think they played Detroit and scored 35 points in the first half. Like, it's not going to look like that where they just they're not going to do what the Bengals did to the Falcons this week. Their offense is not that level of explosive, Um, but it's going to be good enough to get them by. And I think uh, I think San Francisco is the best comp you're going to find for what Tampa is this year, which is an offense that struggles to get 20 points. So looking through their schedule, there's not really a soft landing spot in terms of a stretch of games to get their offense right. Because they play the Ravens next week, 
Raven secondary has been shoddy at points this season, but I don't think they're bad enough to say they're an easy matchup for the offense, for the Buccaneers to start getting things going. They play the Rams after that. They face the Seahawks again, bad defense, but the Seahawks have found a little magic in the bottle. I think we've started to hit the point in the season two, where we can't just sleep on what the Seahawks are doing. The Browns still well constructed defensively. They still can pose issues. The Saints, we know what that defense has done to Tom Brady in the past. I don't see any reason for that to necessarily change. Niners, if they can get right, the Niners are part of their schedule. Bengals, who have just been locked down in the second half of games, that defense has been one of the better underrated stories in the league. Cardinals have an opportunity. Panthers have an opportunity and Falcons. So I will say, okay, that would be it, right? Soft landing part of their schedule. If they can get right, stay in playoff contention, win your division, Start getting right by the time you face the Cardinals late December. Then you have the opportunity to mistake your wrong and play well against this Panthers team end the season and do the same against the Falcons. So they have an opportunity to actually build momentum heading into the playoffs. That's actually something that I think shouldn't be slept on in terms of can this offense fix itself. It just over this next five games, I don't see an offense that's necessarily going to be in rhythm. I, I see a lot of matchups that compose different types of faults for them. That may be one of the big talking points in terms of Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. I, you say like getting it fixed. I don't think there's anything to fix. I think this is, this is what it is at this point. It's not three points against the Panthers, but again, if Mike Evans catches that touchdown, it's 10 points, it's 17 points. Who knows you, what happens? After you could that. do more. You clearly can do more because again, this is the points they've can been they? able to put up throughout. You, you have to think that you can do more based off. Again, you still have solid skill position players in Evans and Godwin. You still have a running back at Leonard Fernand, and you still do have Tom Brady. The offensive line is questionable, but you should still be able to put up more than 19, 20, 12, 31 against the Chiefs in comeback mode, 21 man, against the I Falcons. Don't, Juju, I don't, I don't think Steelers, so, man. 21 against the Panthers. So. I don't think they can do it. I don't think that's this team. You don't team. think they can be more than a 21 point per game team? No, I don't think so. And but again, scoring is down. This is the second lowest scoring output since 2000 in the NFL across the league. Like everyone's offense is down compared to past seasons because of the way defenses are playing too high safeties and daring you to run and throw short and intermediate more often. So 21 this year is not the same as 21 in the past couple of years, but at the same time, no, I, I don't. I don't think Tampa's that team. I think Tampa's a team that's going to scrape to get twenty points a game, and the strength of their team is going to be winning those seventeen to fourteen type of slugfests, which they can do because their defense is better than most of the defenses in the NFL. I, I, I genuinely think not the Panthers game. I think the past few weeks is closer to what the team is, and I know that's weird because it's a Tom Brady team, but the evidence over a not huge sample size, but a relatively good sample size of seven yeah. games. We're suggests... at seven games. We, we know what, yeah. we, we know more or less not, where the team stands. We're not going to get, we're not going to get much better evidence unless the team totally like changes on a dime when everyone gets healthy and they sign someone or trade for someone like, yeah, I, I don't think that's this team. I think this is an average offense that fights to get 17 to 20 points a game. It's it's an average offense that's built on their strong defense. And again, I think that the 49ers do it better than they do it in terms of like their roster construction and doing that style of having a really good defense and an offense that just gets them by. I think the 49ers do it better than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do it. And that's kind of the, the territory that Tampa finds themselves in. All right, guys. Well, what do you make of this slow start by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? We're through seven weeks. What do you make of the evidence? Clearly, this is an offense that is sputtering. Do you think that there's any parts of their schedule that you like for them to get right? Or do you think this just is what it is? Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on social media, Juju and Kyle. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. And we will see you on the next one.